Welcome back everybody to our studies in the criminal law. We're continuing talking about the various different elements of the offence of theft and we're going to be talking about the concept of appropriation in this lesson. This is one that attaches itself quite a lot of controversy or at least a lot of discussion and debate. It's a little bit more um, detailed and a little bit more um, substance to it, shall we say, than some of the other elements of the of the offence. So we'll be talking about this in some detail, making reference, of course, to the case law to illustrate some interesting points. Previous lesson took some time examining the meaning of dishonesty, which is codified in Section 2 of the Theft Act and then subsequently in the case law. So we talked about the case of Ghosh, we then talked about the case of Ivy, and then we finished with the case of Barton from 2020. We are now in this lesson going to look at Section 3 of the Theft Act. Section 3, looking at the idea of appropriation. So this is obviously appropriation in relation to the, uh, quote, appropriation of property. That's what we're essentially getting our heads around in this lesson. And section three looks like this. It says the word appropriates any assumption by a person of the rights of an owner amount to an appropriation. And this includes where he has come by the property without selling it or sorry, without stealing it, should I say, any later assumption of the right to it by keeping or dealing with it as owner. Where property or a right or interest in property is or purports to be transferred for value to a person acting in good faith, no later assumption by him of rights, which he believed himself to be acquiring, shall, by reason of any defect of the, in the transfer's title, amount to theft of the property. We'll get to what section two means uh, later on, but really what's the, the, the point of this provision uh, and the point of the definition of appropriation relates more to section three, subsection one, um, uh, more so than, than subsection two. Subsection two is, a, is, is another element that is attached therein. So the idea of appropriation will essentially just amount to an assumption on the part of the defendant to ownership of the property. That is really all that we are talking about when we think about appropriation. If you are, as a defendant, assuming that you owe, uh, or, or act in a way that is ownership, that is amount to, or, or, or tantamount to, uh, ownership of the property, then you have appropriated that property. And so long as you can um, be, as long as the jury is satisfied that you did so dishonestly and you did so uh, with the intention to permanently deprive, then you have satisfied the requirements for theft under Section 1 of the Act. But more so, and more importantly, is the fact that this idea of appropriation has been discussed at various different stages in the case law. Some very interesting examples, because, of course, we can quite easily understand the basic and the very easy elements of theft, the stealing of something, the taking of someone's property with the intention to permanently deprive. Of course, you are assuming ownership of that property when you do so. That's the sort of trivial part of theft, the trivialities of the of the case law, uh, it, 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 they're the really easy cases that are obvious and uh, and really in most cases won't even go to trial low into the fact that you will um, most likely plead guilty in those cases given the likelihood of a conviction. So what about the more complicated, the more nuanced, the more difficult to understand parts of the case law where we are talking about appropriation in a different context? One such example of this is the case of Morris from 1984. What the case of Morris discusses um, is this idea of removing price labels. So the defendant, um, again, this is 1984, so we didn't really have um, the same kind of uh, barcode scanning and, uh, and self-serve checkouts that we have today in 2024. But essentially, the defendant had gone about removing price labels from some goods in the shop and put them on more expensive items. For some of you who are studying law at university right now, or, or, or even at A-level and are going up to university, you probably won't remember a time when you would go into a shop and instead of there just being a barcode and a price attached to it, uh, you would actually have little price labels, price stickers, and you would go take that to the till and then they would put in the price in the till machine and so you would it would be a lot less automated and far more honest, um, except for this individual um, in this case. 
Essentially, what had happened was he had taken the price labels from some of these goods and then put them on more expensive items in order to be able to purchase the goods at a lower price. Because, of course, they would then take that good up to the up to the counter and the checkout individual, probably not knowing the price of each of the items they, uh, uh, with any um, certainty and confidence, would then just put in the lower price and then you would walk away with um, higher priced goods for a lower price. That's essentially the point of this case. Now, it was determined by the House of Lords that the defendant had interfered with the rights of the owner of the property. He didn't own the property at the time at which he had done so, of course, that it was the owner of the shop who owned the property. And that it was this interference with the rights of the owner of the property that amounted to an appropriation. The interference with the rights of an owner is no longer applicable, however. We'll get to this in a second. But fundamentally, what he said, what it was uh, uh, essentially referencing is the fact that by removing the goods, uh, the, the label of the goods, you had interfered with the rights of that property owner um, because you had basically done something to that on the other person's property, um, which as such, according to the House of Lords, amounted to an appropriation. However, the idea of the interference of rights of an owner is no longer applicable. Uh, and we would call, go back to the case of Lawrence from 1972 to get a better illustration of what appropriation really means in, in, today's, um, in today's case law. Essentially, this is a case in which consent to take property amounted still to an appropriation. So what do we mean by this? Well, the victim in this case was Italian and had hired a taxi in London. Because he was unfamiliar with the fare rates, and in addition to this, not speaking very good English, he essentially instructed the taxi driver to help him determine the amount of um, money for the taxi. So he basically ha put his uh, wallet out or put the money out uh, that was in his hand and, 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 and instructed the taxi driver to take as much money as was the um, amount that was um, the fare amount for, for, um, for, for the taxi journey. And obviously... Uh, the taxi driver, being a dishonest individual, then removed far more from his wallet than the price of the fare. He took more than the price of the fare because he basically exploited the fact that this Italian student, um, not being very good at, uh, at speaking English and not knowing the um, fare rate of the taxi journey, decided that uh, he was, a, he was a, a good person to exploit in this case. Even though the victim had consented to the taxi driver to take the money out of his wallet, it still amounted to an appropriation according to the courts. And the reason for this is obviously quite simple, because you would only take out the the only amount that was actually a valid amount is the amount for the fair price any more than that amounts to theft it amounts to a, an appropriation of the property because that's not your property you were only entitled to the amount that the fair was worth and so if you do so dishonestly of course with the intent to permanently deprive of course then you would of course be um, charged and convicted of theft under the act so it says here, it, it makes it very clear here that even if you had consented to the individual taking that property, um, owing to the fact that you were unfamiliar with the fair rates in this particular case or unfamiliar with how much it actually was, the fact that they took more than the asking price, they took more than the price of the fare, is uh, a tantamount to an appropriation for the purposes of the legislation.